Folks, I am pumped up today. We are doing some work on the lane. Long time coming. We got that culvert installed now, so that was the, the main thing we had to do before we could start this process. Um, got to reroute that water. It's, it's just tending to pool up on the lane, so we got to get rid of that before we uh, proceed with anything else. And if you look close, you're going to see going down this lane, in between those fences, it kind of, everything just uh, is concave. It's just the whole road is down a little bit compared to the ground right around it. And probably, you know, I, I'm sure that's a combination of things, right? Some erosion, compaction, that kind of thing over time. Um, it seems like, you know, this is probably bulldozed or something at some point originally a long time ago when it was installed, just kind of the, the contour of the ground just I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. It just it just seems that way. So what we're doing today, though, is given all these ruts and where it was mud and then hardened and dried out and, and just everything else, going through, using a disc, I was actually going to use a tiller. We showed you the uh, the four-foot tiller behind the summit before, and I, was, I had plans to do that, but um, it's not here right now. So we're using the tools that we have, which is a disc, and it's going to work just fine. And I think it's a good example too for folks that you're going to see some really rocky areas here uh, particularly on the hillside that is uh, near the connection point to the the gravel that we've already done that has washed out uh, from from just the erosion the rain hitting it and and swept away the topsoil and then you can see all the sand underneath that and then all the rocks and there's some that are oh they're they're getting close to a foot in diameter um, and so a lot of folks are, are asking on on the right tool to use uh, to work up the ground in rocky areas in New England and there's other areas too maybe Arkansas seems to come up a lot too as well and you can use a tiller um, tillers are are made to work in rough situations right that's that's all they're doing is working up rough ground to smooth it out and so a tiller will work uh, at a certain point though if you have so many large rocks Maybe a disc is the right tool. It's another option. You can see how it works today, and the entire area is not rocky, but there's there's certain areas where there is a plethora of rocks, and uh, hopefully a little bit representative of some of the areas that you guys are talking about. So this disc here, it it's a little bit well, it's around five foot, I guess at uh, at most. But if you narrow it up and make it the more aggressive position, it narrows up to maybe four and a half foot, right around there. A good fit for the Summit tractor. We actually used it on the gravel uh, originally, uh, and, well, the section of road that's done in gravel right now, uh, last year as well. We knew that it would work good for this application too. So I had thought I would be stripping out this topsoil and there's probably gonna be a few spots that I will take out some topsoil, but uh, after thinking about it, given the fact that the lane itself is at a lower elevation than the sides around it, I am, for the most part, just going to smooth this all out and get rid of those ruts. That way my gravel is a consistent depth from left to right and all the way up and down the lane. So I know when I'm working it, when I'm grading it out, I'm not gonna run into shallow spots and thicker spots. It's just all gonna be consistent. We are gonna use road fabric and I've got a whole pile of that stuff sitting because we're breaking this huge project up into stages. It's just too big of a project to try to tackle at once. And so we did that original front gravel section now we're doing down between the pastures we're going to end up doing a circle all the way around the barn back there uh, some pads for the uh, different attachments that we have for the various sizes of machines and so it's it's easier to break down a huge project like this into those smaller chunks and for those of you that follow along you know i did a video a while back talking about how potentially one project can pay for your whole tractor versus hiring it out you know and, and this is an example of that project where you get the tractor, you get a handful of tools, and yeah, you're still buying the tractor, but the point being is that you spend your time doing it, you have fun, it's, it's fun for a lot of us to do this, you, you chip away at it. This kind of stuff doesn't have to happen in a weekend, right? You can pick away at it, and at the end of the day, when you're done with your project, and maybe over the course of a summer even, you've got a paid for tractor there instead of paying somebody else to do it and being gone with one project, and now you can use that tractor to do all the other stuff around your homestead. And for us, this is a pretty proven example. We put in a 2,000 foot road uh, on our other property a couple of years ago now, and this worked really well. And you're always gonna get folks that say, just get a dozer or get some big skid steer or whatever else. And of course, that kind of equipment is going to tackle this job with ease, but that's not the point. You know, That kind of equipment is really expensive, um, it's just not justifiable for most homeowners and so a compact tractor is way more in the wheelhouse as far as price point goes and versatility too for all the 
tasks that may come up close to the house where a big piece of construction machinery is just not going to do the trick and then the other stuff that's out in the pasture in the woods or, or wherever else it is. Now if you are going to take out this topsoil afterwards then tilling it or disking it like this I think is a really smart idea to do. You can see it's all chopped up now and if I were planning on repurposing this topsoil somewhere else I would probably drive over it a couple more times where uh, at least the sections of it that were pretty soddy just to break those up more and then just let it sit for a bit and kind of decay and do its thing but you're going to have usable topsoil then that you can take and reuse somewhere else on your homestead instead of having if you just went through with a dozer and just push big piles somewhere you're going to have huge clumps and chunks of sod that you'd have to go through and sift through and break down and break out and it'd just be a real pain in the neck so getting this done ahead of time is really a smart move and going to save you a lot of time in the long run so a little bit more about this disc. This is from Dirt Dog, and, and Dirt Dog is uh, made in America, right down in Georgia. They're gonna make all sorts of category one equipment, and we've been working with them for a few years now and really like what they're doing. It's, it's very high quality, it's well built, it's reasonably priced, and it's made in America too. There are gonna be certain components on um, some pieces of equipment like gearboxes on tillers and brush hogs and that kind of thing that are, and maybe uh, like these disc harrow blades I think are from overseas somewhere. Um, but for the most part, it's gonna be made in the U.S. or made in the U.S. with U.S. and imported parts, and so I like supporting that. We're looking for kind of that trifecta of features, quality, and price point, and Dirt Dog just hits the nail on the head with all of those, and so we are gonna carry, well, almost all of their attachments. <laughs> Go to our website and check them out, but we'll have the stuff for the, the small subcompacts and the compacts and then everything up to the large compacts and even some stuff that'll fit utility tractors too. Now something I continue to see value in on a constant basis is going to be the hydraulic top link. All right. We added one on recently. I found one on Amazon. I didn't find it on Amazon. Actually, a viewer uh, found it on Amazon and, and said it worked for them. And so I immediately went out and bought that same one for my Summit Tractor 2. I had bought one previously for uh, my Kubota M4. You need a rear hydraulic remote, all right? The Summit Tractor comes standard with a rear remote. Uh, one of the things that sets it apart from most other tractors on the market. But having that there allows you to put this top link on there. And so you're gonna see, not just in this video, but other videos I've done, but even the process of hooking up to the attachment, you don't have to get off the operator seat. I just adjust that hydraulic top link in or out a little bit to get the hooks right where I need them to. And then of course, when you're using it, I hope you can see this in the video, but it's probably pretty subtle and hard to tell. But um, when I pick it up and to turn around and, and reposition, I'll adjust that top link to, to really make sure those discs are off the ground on the uneven ground so I'm not digging in. And then use that hydraulic top link to get it right back level where I want it or make it a little bit more or less aggressive uh, on the fly. Just small little tweaks. And the convenience of having that, you, you don't realize it until you actually have it. You know, if you're one of those guys that's hopping on and off the track to adjust a manual top link on a regular basis, well, that gets pretty tedious, right? And so having the ability to do that on the fly is just a game changer.
folks, so that is gonna wrap it for today. I think next week we're gonna be ready for gravel. All we're gonna do is get some of these bigger rocks out of here, probably bring a landscape rake through, I'm thinking, and just sort of, sort of level things out uh, pretty much in here and then lay down the road fabric and start getting gravel trucks brought in. So if you wanna catch up, make sure you go back, watch the last couple of videos on putting that culvert in and getting other things ready and then follow along. See how this lane project turns out and then again, we've got more stages left to do all around that barn and the, and the parking pads for the equipment and all that kind of stuff. And if you're looking for an attachment for your tractor, something like the Discaro or maybe an Atagrapple, something for the front end loader or the three point hitch, whatever you need, We'd love to help you out. Go to GoodWorksTractors.com. Our prices include shipping, rewards, and financing too. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.